Welcome back to the Cherry Picking Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Today we are giving you buy low, sell high. Uh, two buy lows, two sell highs. Gianni is joining me for today's episode. Uh, let's get into some buy lows. Who do you have? So my buy low today is uh, none other than Mika Zibanejad. Now this is a guy who's always one of the always a fantasy player. When you go into the season, you're like, this guy can get 45 goals. This guy can get mm-hmm. 25 goals. You really don't know what to expect. He's really down right now. I think he can still give third round value the rest of the year. Kind of reminds me last year. I'm gonna say a ludicrous trade I made. Mm-hmm. But last year, so I'm in a bangers league. So hits, blocks, all those are kind of at a premium. Yep. I traded uh, Jordan Stahl at a 9.2 average for Zabinajad <laughs> at a 6.2 average. Wow. And it was just like you know he's not gonna keep up the pace he's at. He's doing a little better this year than he was to start last year. So. Maybe the bump you're going to get isn't as exaggerated, but I think there's a lot of people who maybe took him early in the second round and kind of regretting that decision now. Maybe they're not doing too well because mm-hmm. their early draft didn't go great. And you can just probably take advantage by selling high on like two guys, gets a Benajad and somebody else. It's probably a good deal to make. Like at this point in the season, the Rangers are doing so well. Yeah, they are. Right? Even Panarin mm-hmm. started off really bad, but mm-hmm. I think their, their offense is going to get going a bit more especially right now with uh, Ryan Stroms on the COVID list, I think, along with the other half of the NHL on it. But I, I think right now is a good time to try to pick up a guy like Zubin Jad. Yeah, a lot of people were kind of a little bit hesitant this year to draft him because of what they saw at the start of last year where yep. he was really bad and people were actually dropping him. But I do agree. I think that like the Rangers are too good right now for him not to step up, and they're going to continue to give him opportunity. I think that he's a... He's a, he's a good buy low. You can get him at a cheap price. And I'm going to get into my sell high, but I do think that my sell high's production is going to go down and Zibby's production is going to go up yeah. is what we're going to see. Uh, but I have Ryan O'Reilly. We talked a little bit about him on a couple episodes, but never actually really talked about him. Um, the Blues have the third best power play in the NHL. Uh, they've been hot as of lately. They started off the year, obviously, like streaking. They kind of had that cold streak, and now they're back playing well. Ryan O'Reilly was a plus 26 last year. He's a minus one this year on the blue, and the Blues were w- worse last year. Yeah. Like, they suck he, last year. Yeah, he's just like too good of a player for that plus minus to stay like that. Like, he's been just known to be a great five on five player, and it just hasn't been working out this year. But he's going to find his game. Uh, his shot percentage is the lowest since his rookie season right now uh, at 5%. 5% shot rate, and his expected goals is 8.2, and he only has five goals this year. So I think just the luck is going to turn his way at some point. Um, and obviously, that plus minus is just a key indicator of things are going to change. You just got to figure out. I mean, I think they need to, I think they're going to workshop new lines. And yeah. once they find their groove, I mean, Ryan O'Reilly is going to be in a good spot. Two guys I had here was Kadri and Timo Meyer. I'd trade for O'Reilly if I could, if I could try and squeeze that. Yeah, I think to the point, too, of the Blues, a lot of Western Conference teams, like, you just saw, like, Calgary, Edmonton, Mm -hmm. a lot of those teams are starting off so hot, they're starting to cool off, things are starting to level out now, so with a couple of those teams, like, Markstrom started off with, like, five shutouts in the first, like, 12 games, like, just ridiculous things going on early on, just the puck luck wasn't getting there, things are just, they're always going to normalize, so a guy like that would probably kind of bounce back up and... He's one of those guys too, where he's not oh he's not ever really like blowing up point totals. He's yeah. always doing pretty good, and he's just doing like really bad right now. Yeah, like he's usually like pretty solid. Like he doesn't have any crazy really games. Like he'll just like continue to get points. And yeah, he hasn't been doing that, but I think good things are coming. Uh, like every episode, it feels like you have a hot take every episode. Yeah, and your sell high is, it's a hot take. Yeah, uh, why don't you let everyone know who your sell so, high is? Speaking of uh, Western Conference team starting off hot, kind of cooling off. Uh, my cello or sell high, yeah. sorry, is uh, Leon Dreisaitl. And this is there's, there's a good reason why. So Cole's on the mic here. He knows what's going on. What's up, boys? So we were looking at Dreisaitl because we were just mm-hmm. so goddamn impressed with what was going on at Edmonton. I think it was when he had he had 21 goals in 20 games, right, at yeah. a point? Yeah. He was shooting over 33%, right? So in these six games since, he's only had two goals, which, again, still really, like, two goals in six games is, like, fine. It's not, yeah. like, terrible, but his shooting percentage has dropped down to like twenty seven, and his career average I think was like what was it eighteen? Uh, he's twenty four percent shooting right now. Right now, he's, mm-hmm. so he's dropped down pretty heavily, and his career shooting percentage is seventeen point six. Yeah, a lot, yeah. Of, lots of room to go down there. So mm-hmm. he's gonna. 
continue to drop down. Um, my take with him is right now he's on a 70 goal pace. Yeah, he insane. was at like 85 before. He's at 72. He's at 70 now. So I would almost be willing to bet he won't hit 60 goals. Which again, two two times has 60 goals been hit since 2005. Just been Ovi and Stamkos. The fact that it's only been done once by Ovechkin should tell you all you really need to know. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think like he's obviously going to be a really good player to finish the year. He's probably going to finish with 55 goals. Maybe he'll get close to 60. But last, what is it, like 57 games of the year, if he only gets you another 20 goals or so, that's not that's not cutting it for what you could get right now. And you could be looking at a guy like Dougie Hamilton, could be looking at guys we just talked about mm-hmm. as a piece in return, and they could both finish the year with like maybe not as nearly, not as much points, but a closer amount plus another really good piece. Uh, yeah, I think it, it's got to be, if you're, if you're going to trade them, I think it's got to be a two-for-one deal. Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah, like I don't think anyone's straight up other than obviously, I think would you take McKinnon over Dreisaitl right now? Yeah, I feel like McKinnon. Yeah. The Colorado, like Colorado's offense is banging right now. Mm-hmm. They started off really slow. Um, another guy talked about in preseason. Preseason, mm-hmm. uh, David Pasternak. Yep. Another that guy was a I hot said, take. A lot of people, take. a lot of people are yapping in the comments, right. but turns out that like exactly what you said on that podcast was right. The other four players that went after him were better picks right yeah. now. People so, were big mad on that one. Yeah, the comments yeah. were Listen, loaded man. about that. Sometimes comments were loaded. You got to go against the grain sometimes. Yeah, so. hey, that's why we're so. here. I mean, that's a, it's a hot take. I mean, Dreisaitl is the number one fantasy player right now in non-hit, non-banger leagues. Exactly. So, so if you're talking about a guy like that, like mm-hmm. imagine just what you could get. If you find the right team, imagine what you get back right now. I do agree. I think, I, I, like, I agree from a. It obviously, it has to be the right trade. It's got to be the right back. Yeah. I think it's got to be a two for one. It's got to be a top, a top ten pick and something. This is not a scenario. Like, I'm gonna follow up my statement by saying this is not a scenario where if you have dry settle, I'm saying dump him, get what you can get now. Mm-hmm. I'm saying explore. Yeah, start shopping him. See if somebody's offering you the right deal. There's gonna be a few people in a few leagues where they have dry settle. And maybe they're not doing as well as they should be, and you can just yeah. get a couple really good pieces for him back. Sometimes that stability of having two good pieces is better than just one elite piece. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Um, maybe not. And I think this is a great trade, I think, more for 12 or higher leagues, like more people, because obviously 10 man, like less players, yeah. like maybe don't trade dry title. But yeah. I think 12 man, 14 man, or whatever you're in, like I think that's perfect. Yeah. Um, I'm going with the guy we were talking about, Chris. Kreider, um, like we said, uh, with Zibby sort of not really performing what we thought, Chris Kreider has been really good uh, for the Rangers. He's got 10 power play goals. It's actually right behind Dreisaitl for the league uh, lead. Um, I don't think that that continues. Like, that's crazy. There's too much talent on that Rangers power play. Like, it's just going to get passed around. Yeah. Like, you got Panarin and you got Zibby. Like, at some point, like, those goals are just going to be going, like, it's going to be literally just get even. It's just going to get balanced. Like, yeah. Chris Kreider has not been getting assists. Like, he's been just scoring. And if 10 of his 17 goals are on the power play, that definitely worries me. Uh, and obviously, the Rangers power play is pretty good, too. Like, you look who's on it. Like, there's so much talent on that power play. I just don't think this continues. His expected goal is 11.9. He has 17 goals this year. So, obviously, he's been getting a little puck luck. Uh, I said Pierre-Luc Dubois and Tarasenko I'd rather have right now over Kreider. Yeah, I think similar to Kreider, another guy who, like, real similar to him is Marcus Foligno right now, mm-hmm. who's just, I think he has, like, a 12 goals and, like, six assists. Just something ludicrous. His season average is way too high. Just not going to keep that up. I I love Chris Kreider. Like as a player, I think he's really good. Yeah. But you know, you're not smashing your career goals by like ten or fifteen, right? Especially at that age, he's probably you know what he's going to be. He's mm-hmm. going to cool down. You're going to see other guys on his team step up. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I think there's more talent, and obviously they're not like crafting plays for Kreider on that power play. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? It's like, not he's designed been, for him. Yeah, he's been just like he's been playing well on the power play, but I don't see them being like, oh yeah, he's our guy. Like they put too much money into Zibby and Panarin to, yeah. to do that. That's our buy low, sell high. Make sure you comment below what you think of the picks and make sure you comment below what you think of Gianni's hot take. That's always hot. Yeah, I'm always never going to come in with, with any loop. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you guys next week.